Just, just explain exactly what it is you'd like the politicians to do. Well, first of all, uh, it's not just a group of celebrities. It is a, a group of all, all the sort of pioneering people who've been working uh, on getting menopause accepted both in the workplace and in wider society for, you know, donkey's years, to be quite honest. We've got doctors, we've got all kinds of different associations. The thing is that in this day and age, celebrities amplify voices that don't often get heard. And the voices of menopausal women have not been heard for millennia. So first of all, we just want to be in Parliament saying menopause as loudly and emphatically as we can. Secondly, we're also anticipating something that's happening later on in the day when uh, the Speaker, the Right Honourable Lindsay Hoyle, will be announcing measures for well-being for women um, in terms of Parliament actually recognising that this is a kind of phase of life where, uh, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of women need support um, and that it's a situation that for a very long time has just left women floundering. You've ended up with one in 10 women leaving the workforce. That's a, a million women every year because they're trying to struggle through with symptoms that dare not speak their name because of the appalling culture that, that there has existed, a sort of toxic culture around the subject of menopause, again, for way too long. So the fact that we're in Parliament today and presenting to MPs uh, the menopause mandate um, is actually a really historic moment and one that all women can celebrate because this is uh, a phase, as I say, that no woman is going to escape happens to 50% of the population and for all kinds of cultural, social reasons uh, that I could bang on about forever, but you probably don't want me to. You know, we no, find no, ourselves no, in the 21st... <laughs> to, compl a, a compl I'll, 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 I'm of a, of a different view, Mariela, because something you said, they're really just, really just trying with me, they aren't going into Parliament saying the word menopause, menopause, menopause over, again, over and over again. It is only in the past year and a half, two years, that doing this job, I have noticed us discussing it as a news topic, as, a, a, as something that needs to be looked at, needs to be examined. So clearly something has changed in the recent past. Well, we're really hoping it has. I mean, I made a documentary mm. in 2019 about menopause, and at the time it was considered absolutely shocking and took me yeah. three years to persuade the BBC to um, to make. You know, since then, obviously, there's been two really strong campaigning uh, documentaries made by Davina for Channel 4. And I do feel that it is sort of gradually creeping out there into society as a whole. But the crazy thing, as you just identified, is that women have been going through menopause since time immemorial. And one of the things that we were so shocked about, uh, Alice Nelly and I, when we wrote Cracking the Menopause, was the culture of shame that's developed around it, the way it's been misdiagnosed and misappropriated and misunderstood, unfortunately, and no offence to your own fair sex, uh, but by the <laughs> very uh, section of the community of, of, of you know, that, that, that will never experience it you know so women have found themselves you know being cursed for being full of toxic blood and have leeches applied to various parts of their anatomy you probably don't want to talk about on breakfast television um, and and so you know we are finally now yes it is the last great I would say it's the last great hurdle I think for full equality is for what women go through to be recognized because we can't afford to lose one in 10 women in the workplace. We can't afford to be losing a million experienced, capable women every year down to something that is completely natural and solvable. If, if you've got GPs who are trained, which okay. they're not enough. Just, just then, just tell us uh, as much as anything else. Then, and you're right. You're absolutely right. The the, the reliance share, the responsibility has to rest with. Uh, you wouldn't have called. You wouldn't have called me a member of my fair sex if you'd been able to see me properly. Your screen must be playing up this morning, Mariella. But but what <laughs> hey, we do need to, what what we do need what we do need uh, as men is, is is to hear what it is like. If we are not side by side with someone going through that process, you know our tendency to not look further than the end of our nose. Men need to hear a bit more, I think, about what it feels like to be going through this. The, the, the very difficult thing about menopause is, well, I mean, one of the many difficult things is that it hasn't been studied enough. So to date, we have about 50 known symptoms. Um, but the only one that you know, has been widely recognized is, of course, the ubiquitous uh, uh, hot flush, uh, which most people deem to be the sign of menopause. I didn't have any. I had two, actually. And uh, they were, frankly, one of the most horrendous things I've ever experienced. It felt like someone had put a blowtorch to the soles of my feet and this heat just rose up my body. And, you know, I started sweating. I mean, it was absolutely terrifying. And you can't... Uh, 
think of them as anything other than a hot flush because it doesn't feel like just getting a bit hot and sweaty uh, at work. But along with that, there's all of these less well-known and in many ways more debilitating symptoms unless you're getting a lot of hot flushes a day. Anxiety, insomnia, itchy skin. You know, women get to the point where they feel that they're going crazy. And you, that happens to you at a time in your life when already the pressure of an ageist society is making you feel unheard and unwanted. And, you know, so they go to the doctors. A third of women who go to the doctor presenting menopausal symptoms are prescribed antidepressants, which is a disgrace because that makes, it really just compounds the sense that you're losing your mind. When in fact, what it is, is your hormones crash, they drop, uh, it's going on exactly the opposite journey that they have when, when you're going through puberty. And because of that huge crash in hormones, your body desperately needs them replaced. And so unless there's a particularly pertinent medical reason that you can't take HRT, HRT is the solution. It's how you top up your depleted hormones. And it's become incredibly controversial because there was a terrible report that came out in 2012 that basically said that it gave you breast cancer. And that report has been found since then to be completely flawed, to be inaccurate, to be based on a tiny proportion of women, etc. cetera. And, um, you know, getting that out there even it, it is a struggle. You've got in this country about 18 million women who are 40 and above, that means menopausal women. And out of them, 550,000 of them are taking HRT to help with their symptoms. And the other, what is it, 17 and a half million, are mm. struggling through because they think that the onus is on them, which happens so often to women, to just get through it, grit your teeth. And actually, for a lot of women, that's not possible. And it's tipping them over the edge and they're leaving the workplace. And we want to see that stop. We want to see GPs properly trained. We want to see a menopause spe a specialist in every single GP um, practice in the country. And we want free HRT for women because it should never be a socioeconomic choice. And that's what Menopause Mandate is campaigning for in Parliament today. Well, let's see uh, if the government listens to you. Mariella Frostrup, great to have you in the programme. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.